Welcome. In this session, we'll explore some of the properties of particular Laplacian matrices. Let's consider first the Laplacian matrix for our first graph. This was our first graph. It had a cycle in one component and a simple connection in the other component. The Laplacian matrix for this is something that we've already computed, and what we can see is that it has a block diagonal structure. Now, what are some of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors that are associated with this matrix? Well, we can use MATLAB to find these. And we already know that one of the eigenvalues is 0, because that's associated with the ones vector. We then find that there are these three other eigenvalues, and uh, they're very simple numbers, right? They're all, they're all simple positive integers. And what we can see is the dimension of the null space here is 2. That is, 0 is a repeated eigenvalue. And we can see that one eigenvalue has a subspace of dimension 1. And then the other unique, so there are only three unique eigenvalues here. And the other one has a dimension 2 eigenspace. So these are observations that we can make immediately from the, uh, f by knowing the eigenvalues of this graph. Now, let's suppose that we look at graph 3. So graph 3, we can recall, was this cycle structure. And then in the other component, we've added a single vertex, and we've connected it to just one other vertex. Now, what we see are that the eigenvalues, when we use MATLAB to compute, is we're still getting two of these as zeros, and one of them is two, and then the others are three. And the question is, do we, are we starting to detect a pattern? And one of the patterns that I'll draw your attention to is this, is that the dimension of the null space is matching the number of components in the graph. So let's take a look at graph 2. For graph 2, we know there is always one uh, eigenvalue that's zero, and now the rest of them are non-zero, and now we're starting to see some non-integer eigenvalues coming in. And we already know what eigenvalue, eigenvector 1 is. That is, the eigenvector for this is the ones vector. The question is, what's the eigenvector for this eigenvalue? And when we do that computation, to four digits, this is what we get is we get three of these are negatives and three of these are positives. There's no pattern to the absolute values of these, but there is a pattern to the sign of these. And that is the ones with the negative sign are one, two, and three. And those are these. And so <clears throat> what we're seeing is that the negative eigen the negative entries of the second eigenvector are corresponding to this cluster. And then these positive ones are corresponding to this cluster. So that's an observation that we can make by just looking at some examples. Now, let's try one more graph. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, this structure, and now we've removed the cycles, and all we've really done is relabeled it. And so what's happening is that if we take a look at that second eigenvector, what we see is it's identifying the positive as entries 1, 4, 5, and that corresponds to vertices 1, 4, Five. And so what's happening is this eigenvector, the negative entry, the positive entries are corresponding to this cluster of, of vertices, and the negative, which are 2, 3, and 6, are corresponding to this. So what's happening for our examples is that the second eigenvector, the positivity or negativity of the entries are identifying what we can see as visual clusters in our graph. 